welcome to Phenomenal Life Today. We're your host, Dr. Brian Lewis, my wonderful husband, and I'm Pastor Tara Lewis. Welcome to today's broadcast. So today... Well, uh, first I want to just say God is good, and yes, Pastor Tara and I are very excited to be here, and we really were agonizing over what message to bring to you. We had really two that were in our hearts, and this one, the Lord just really dropped in my spirit about fret not, wreck not. not. And some of you are fretting, and that fretting is leading to you entering into a wreck in your life. And if you can get the right mindset and the right mentality wrapped around the things of God and the promises of God, yes. we really believe that you can propel yourself into a positive and uplifting and inspiring and blessed future. That's right. And so today our message comes to you from Psalm 37, and we may go back and forth between some other uh, scriptures for you, but we're going to start. And we're just going to take it line upon line here, and if we get through it today, praise be to God. If praise we him. don't, praise be to God, yes. and we'll revisit it. Okay. But Psalm 37, and the scripture says, "Do not fret because of evil doers, nor be envious of the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut off like the grass and wither." as the green herb. Yes. Now, one thing I wanted to get in here for you real quick is this, is I wanted to define fret because that's the main focus of our title. Right. And the word fret is defined like this, to cause, to be uneasy, to vex. That's like a biblical term. I'm, I'm, I'm vexed, you know, and that means you feel uneasy. But it gets into uh, a, a deeper meaning here. It says to gnaw or wear away. Mm. When you're fretting, it's gnawing at you. Wow. It's, it's wearing away at you. It's wearing away at your faith. It's gnawing away at your heart. Your emotions, your wow. mind are getting all involved. Uh, it says to produce a hole or a war worn spot to corrode. It begins to corrode your wow. life. It begins to cause you to lose focus on the things of God. And, and it begins to erode things. And, and, and basically, it begins to eat away at you. Right. And right. so I wanted to start off by saying this, and I really want to, and I'm working, y'all, on really allowing Pastor Tara to speak because you know I'm a born-again Jew, and that just that Jewish part just to to kick talk. in, <laughs> and I'd just be talking like nobody's business. But there are people that wrote you off told you you were never going to be at anything, told you you were never going to do anything, and, and, and they're going on with their lives, and, and they're not even doing it the way that God will want them to do. But God doesn't want you to worry about evil doers or people who are doing evil Amen. or the workers of iniquity That's or right. how they got in, how they got over, how they're doing it. He wants you to do it his way because he says right here in this word that don't worry about these people. It doesn't right. matter how they're making their money. Don't worry about people in the world. Don't worry about celebrities. Amen. Don't worry about somebody and how they got promoted on the job if they didn't do it in righteousness because Amen. this word tells you that they will be cut off like the green grass, that they will wither like the uh, 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 green herb, Herbs. that their time mm -hmm. is coming and right. to be cut off means that to be destroyed in the Bible, but don't let it wear you out. Don't let it uh, cause it to erode your faith. Don't right. let it cause it to corrode your relationship with God. Don't be angry with God, right. but trust in God. Right, amen. Here it says, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. And the scripture is saying here, like, that's what their end is. That's what an evil yes. doer's end is, those who work iniquity. And we're the righteousness of God, not yes. because of our own doing, but being in right standing with God, doing things the way that God would have us to do. So we know that here in this scripture, this is not our end. Right. We can get excited because we're not going to be envious. We're not going to fret. We don't want our lives to corrode away. We don't want erosion in our lives. And if you feel like that's what's happening to you right now, don't fret. Right. Don't fret. And don't look at their success right. uh, as, as an indication that you're not going to be successful. And God is clear in Joshua chapter 1, I right. think it's verses 7 and 8, the way that you have success God's way is you meditate on the Word of God day and night and observe all that's written there in the Word. Yes. The Word should be in your mouth, nigh thee in thy mouth, and even in thy heart, the Word of faith. And I'm kind of mixing the scriptures together, but he talks about that the Word should be in your heart and, and that you should meditate on the Word day and night yes. and ascribe to do all that's that written, written there in, in mm -hmm. and then you will make your way prosperous, prosperous and then you will have good success. You got to live the Word. You got to breathe the Word. You got yes. to do the Word and don't worry about these people. Now, 
It's saying, look, don't fret. Don't let this stuff get to you. Right. Don't let it affect your life. I mean, look, I'm going to tell you, I have seen some people that I can't believe that they got exalted. I can't believe, I'm not saying God exalted them, but I can't believe that they went up. But just as surely as they went up, they're going to go down. Yeah. But for the believer, God makes us special promises. Yes. And the thing is, this is you may be going through and you're confused and you don't know what to do. And hey, I have been there. You know, I know what it's like to feel like, well, what am I going to do? And why are they making it? Why am I not making it? Why are they succeeding? Right. Why am I not succeeding? Right. But God says, okay, he's telling us, don't do this. Right. Don't do that. Right. That's not going to help you. That's right. not going to heal you. Worrying about it, it's not going to add one cubit to your stature. It's not going to do anything for you. God already knows what you have need of. Right. Now he says here in verse three, this is, he's saying, trust in the Lord. That means keep faithing keep and faithing. do good and dwell in the land and feed on his face faithfulness. Look, some of you feel that once something happens in your life or you see somebody else promoted and you don't even know, they don't even deserve it and you don't know why, you feel like I got to do something. Or uh, when you get under attack and the bills are due and things need to be paid or stuff's happening, you want to make something happen for yourself. You just want it to happen, but God is saying, wait, just hold up. Right. The first thing that you got to do is you got to trust in me. Trust. Do you believe in me? Do you believe in my plan for your life? Are you going to trust in me? And don't just have faith in me, but you know what? Do good. Don't fret. Don't allow this to affect your mental disposition. Don't worry about these other people, but trust in me. Do good. And check this out. Dwell in the land. Stay where I placed you right. and feed on my faithfulness right. until you can learn to be content where you are until you can learn to be still and know that I'm God. I'm not going to move you out from where you are. Dwell in the land. Recently, I felt like maybe we should move back to Los Angeles. Maybe we should go here. Maybe we should go there. And God spoke to me and to my heart, and he said, stay where I placed you and feed on my faithfulness. Yes, amen. Feed on his faithfulness. You know what I love about uh, when the next verse says, trust in the Lord, right, right here, we already know that God has given us an indication of when you aren't trusting in right. Him, when you're fretting. Amen. That is a clear indication that you are not trusting in God. When you are corroding, your faith is corroding away the uh, erosion in your life where now you're not reading your word. Now the scriptures are not coming to you. Now you're not praising God in the daytime, in the noontime, and in the nighttime. Now you're not waking up at 5 a.m. in the morning. Now you're no longer believing in God. And that's a clear indication that you are not trusting God. And listen Amen. at this. You may say, okay, yeah, I know that because I can see that mm -hmm. I'm not doing the things that I've been, I've normally been doing. But here it's because you're fretting over those that right. are, that you might feel envious of. It's because of what you see is going on in the world. Right. Like now you're seeing all these, these people that are not serving God. You see them going up and now you're feeling <laughs> right. like, oh, wait a minute. Right. Am I doing the wrong thing? But I, I just want to stay here and say this. One of the things, the trick of the enemy is, is to get you to look at the unrighteous, those that right. are working iniquities, to get you to discount God, to stop trusting God, to get you to compromise. And this is something that we've seen creep into the church is that so many people in the church, they want to be like the world, especially from the success part. Right. When I first came to Christ, I thought being a Christian was like you had everything in the world, but you also had the power of God working for you too. Right. The thing is, this is you can't judge whether or not you're a true believer, whether you have a big house and a big car Amen. and a, a fat, cushy Amen. job. The only way that you can really judge whether you're a believer is whether you are trusting in God, Amen. doing good when you feel like fretting. You're not allowing the enemy to attack and irritate your mind, but you are, you are saying, look, Lord, I know that I may feel this way, but I'm not going to trust in my feelings. I'm not going to put faith in my feelings. My feelings are a lie. What is true is that you said I could dwell in the land. I could be where you place me and I could feed on your faithfulness. And then he says, not only are we supposed to do that, don't worry about these people, okay? Whoever they are, you know who it is that's vexing you and bothering you and you looking at their life and comparing their life. I wish I had a marriage like them. I wish right. I had a car like them. Right. I wish I had uh, that. Let's say, I wish I looked like uh, Pastor Tara and she looked good. And she was on that show, The Sisterhood and tearing it up. So, you know, but for God, so she might actually be a good example. But the Bible says, dwell, uh, delight yourself awesome. also. So don't just do all these other things, but delight yourself in the Lord 
and he shall give you the desires of your heart. To delight is to take great pleasure or joy in. The thing is this is that we are supposed to develop our relationship with God. We, Christianity is not about rules, regulations. It's not about religion. It is about developing and maintaining a relationship with God. And many times he allows situations and circumstances to come so that the Bible, this is a biblical term, so that you will cling to him. Right. You, you, you almost want to cling to him and find your joy and find your pleasure, not in what others are doing, not in where you presently are, but in who he is and trust that God is going to work a work internally in your heart so that you begin to understand what his desire, what his plan, what his will is right. for your life. That's right. You know, as we go to the next one, it says delight yourself. But as we said previously, each one is building upon itself. And in order for you to trust, which is to rely on, adhere to, and believe in. So in order to delight yourself, you got to rely on, you got to adhere to the yes. word of God and you've got to believe in. Yes. So when you have these things often, because you may say, well, how do I find this way to delight in God when I feel this anguish, when I feel this disappointment and this discouragement right. in my life? And the truth is, in your humanity, you cannot delight yourself in the Lord right. if you're looking at your circumstances. But when you begin to trust, and you're not trusting in your circumstances, but when you're trusting in the Word of God, then you can begin to delight in Him also because guess what? Because now you fi find this peace and this calmness is that, wait a minute, I can't do this. I can't bring this to pass. Right. It's all God or nothing at all. So I love the scripture that says delight because it brings this calm delight and this calm peace where, you know, uh, I thought about this as we mm -hmm. were driving here. To delight, when you think about a maid and you think about someone that's special, when you delight in them, you're taking time to think about right. them. You're taking time to, you know, consider them. What when, brings them pleasure. What, what brings, brings them, them pleasure, joy. yes. You're delighting. You're bringing, you have these wonderful thoughts about this person. That's how you delight in God. It's not necessarily just the worship music, but it's like, God is good. God has been good to me. God is a loving God. God is a compassionate God. God is great. That's delighting in God. Well, you know, the thing is this is that if you delight yourself in God, it will affect your emotions That's in right. a very positive way. The heart is the emotional center. It's the believing center. It's it's where you put your faith and your trust and your hope in God. You know, you confess the Lord Jesus Christ with your mouth, but you uh, uh, believe in him with your heart. You believe uh, yes. uh, uh, with your heart unto salvation. Okay, confess the Lord with uh, Jesus Christ with your mouth and with your heart. You believe, believe unto, unto righteousness. Yes. <laughs> we, we, he Help me, Jesus. <laughs> but the thing is, we this is it. I want to segue. I want to come back to the scripture, but I really want to segue here because I believe that there's a connection between your mind and your mouth. Mm -hmm. And when you're not delighting yourself in the Lord, then you begin to get over into something called complaining. Okay. And I wanted to um, bring this. There's, there's two series of scriptures I want to bring. First Corinthians chapter 10. And um, because there's a limitation on our time here, uh, this is speaking about Old Testament examples that God gave us uh, as it related to being in a wilderness season and having to dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness, okay. having to feed on the manna and the quail and the water from a rock and really having to trust God as a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. Yes. And, and all the things that we shouldn't do, lusting after evil things and becoming idolaters and, 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 and getting into sexual immorality. And it really talks about what happened to the Israelites when they begin to complain against God. Okay. And it says, um, verse 10, because I'm trying to kind of go quickly here, it talks about them not complaining as some of them also complained and were destroyed by the destroyer. That's right. When you complain against God, it will short circuit your life. And, and, and complaining really communicates to the Lord that you don't know what you're doing with mm. my life. And, and, and I can't trust you with my life. And, 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 and as a matter of fact, I would do things differently. Mm -hmm. And so the thing is this, when you're delighting in God, you're believing that God is going to do what he said he would do. But when you're complaining, you are actually saying, hey, I know what's better. And you really don't. And this is the thing. God says, all right, 
you know what? You don't want to trust in me. You don't want to do good. You don't want to dwell in the land. You don't want to feed on my faithfulness. You don't want to have pleasure in me. You don't have joy in me. You don't want to put all uh, of, of your heart and your desire into me, but you want to begin to look at what other people are doing and what you don't have, and you're complaining, grumbling, bemoaning, right. and why don't I get, and why don't I have, and why am I not here, and why are they there, and all that kind of stuff. Then you know what? I'm going to let the destroyer, the devil come in and begin to wreak havoc in your life. Fret not, wreck not. You don't want to have a wreck. Amen. But the thing is this, if your mind is not right, it's going to affect your mouth. That's and your right. mouth is going to affect your present situation. And when it begins to affect your present situation, I can tell you, I have been a complainer in life. Tara will tell you, I have complained, bemoaned, grumbled. Like I said, I'm Jewish. I can complain with the best of them. But you know, I am tired of being delayed. I am tired of being denied. And I am tired of having my future purpose and destiny destroyed. And I don't want the destroyer to come into my life. And so the Bible says that we have these things as, as, as examples, as an admonition. That, yes, and the warning. Bible says, take heed, if you, uh, uh, take heed, uh, let him who thinks he can stand, take heed lest he fall. Right. The thing is this, is you've got to begin to focus on the things of God. And the Bible says this, no temptation, the temptation to complain, to give in, to buckle under, to begin to grumble and complain against God, get mad at God, get angry at God, feel like God doesn't know what he's doing, mm -hmm. uh, has overtaken you except what is common to man. Everybody, ha everybody feels the same things. But feelings right. are not actuality. Feelings are not even reality. Feelings are just emotions, and you don't have to give in to your emotions. And many times feelings could be an enticement or a temptation that the devil wants to use to induce you out of what God really has for you. Right. Except is a common to man, but God is faithful. Again, God is faithful. God is going to be faithful. Amen. He cannot lie. Uh, if he said it, he's going to do it. That's right. Who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. So there is purpose in the temptation. He's proving you. But with the temptation will also may make, make a, way a way of, of escape, escape that you may be able to bear, bear it. it. The way of escape is getting out of fretting and getting in to Jesus. Amen. What I like about uh, the scripture, I love all the scripture, yes. but what I like about this particular scripture, it says that don't complain. Right. And what I realize and what we need to understand, there's a law of attraction by what comes out of your mouth. Right. So when we talk about delighting yourself in God, it brings God, it brings the presence of God, his faithfulness into your life and operation and what right. he will do for you, his promises and his will into your life. When we complain, we bring the law of attraction of what complaining does. It releases the destroyer. So then you have those things. So you know how if you don't appreciate the little things that right. you have, then they'll be taken from you. Right. So when you're complaining about particular things in your finances and your husband and your children and your home and your job, then you and eventually what happens is that destroyer comes. It may not be, you may be complaining about the job, but you may not lose the job, but it may be a bill that comes that's unknowingly beyond to you coming to your house that's going to cause you pain. Well, you're going to wreck. Right. I mean, wreck. plain and simple, you are going to wreck. It's going to be like a pothole that you can't avoid, and you are going to suffer damage, and you will be in a worse place than you were when you started out. So I would just say, look, just stay the course. And the thing that I want to say is God has purpose in it. Um, there was another scripture that I, I wanted to read to you as it related to this in uh, Philippians chapter 2, uh, verse 12. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, so obedience is really key, yes. not as in my own presence only, but how much more in my absence. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. I'm getting somewhere, but I want to say this. Don't you know that this is a test and that you've got to work out your own salvation? You don't have to save yourself. You, you're Amen. saved by grace working through faith, but you got to walk this thing out, honey, and you got to allow God to work on you, and you got to participate in working out your own deliverance, your own healing. You, you, you got to be submitted and subjected. If you're not trusting in God and doing good and, and staying where he told you to stay right. and having pleasure in him and worshiping him and honoring him and doing the things that you know that are going to make for yes. a, a, a peaceful re uh, a relationship between you and God, then you're not working it out. You got to work it out. You got to walk it out. You got to believe God. There's stuff that you got to do. 
this message of you don't have to do nothing, it's already done for you, then why are you here in the first place? Well, sometimes God delays and denies things because he's working on you. Because the scripture goes on, says, or is it is it God who works in you both to will and, and to do. do for his good pleasure? Amen. For it is God, rather. I have some... Uh, so God is using, he's working in you to will, to get that desire, to, to, to Lord, give me the will. Yes. Give me the want to. Yes. Give me the desire to do your good pleasure, to, to, to delight in you. Give me, Lord, this is my prayer. I don't know about you, but I pray like this. Give me the desires of my heart. Give me the desires of my heart. Help me to delight in you even though I'm going through. Yes. And then I love this. Do all things without complaining and disputing and it talks about going on and how you can become blameless and and and, and reach this level of maturity in Christ. I'm going to tell you when the finances are funny that's when the complaining starts with me and then we begin to dispute. You know a lot of marital disputes uh, marriages just go off the train tracks because all of a sudden complaining. If you keep complaining, you're sowing into that, you're going to reap a harvest. The right. Bible says if you sow into the flesh, uh, you know, of the flesh, you will reap corruption and destruction. And so the thing is, this is that the complaining will lead to disputes and arguments. Now you're arguing over anything. It could be, you don't love me. It could be how you raise the kids. It could be, I don't like, I don't like how you eat next to me. I don't like that you brought crackers in the bed and left crumbs. I mean, and when you got this complaining mindset, you're going to just go after anything to argue because you, you're not going to be doing good. Right. Uh, here it says, do all things without complaining. Like you said, you know, the scripture says that he who's faithful over a little mm -hmm. shall be made ruler over much. Yes. And so here we are, the scripture in Psalms begins with do not fret because of evildoers and don't be envious because obviously there are things that you see going on in their lives and things that they have that you may want. Well, in order to receive more from God, we've got to stay away from that place of complaining and begin to delight ourselves in God in, in here. And I love it because we said fret not, wreck not. Yes. So you may be at a place where your life feels like it's already wrecked and you look back over it and you may say, well, I haven't been complaining, but have you been trusting God? Right. Have you been relying on him? Have you Amen. been adhering to his word? Have you been following? And it's not about works, but it's about calm delight, seeking God out of a pure heart, not because you just want something from right. him, but you want him in your life. And here it says without disputing, because in the disputes, there's the warring opinions, right. there's the arguments, there's the anger, there's the, the words that don't uplift God, you know, there's cursing and, and there's things that are being said that you may say, well, I know I'm not perfect and I may be messing up a little bit and, and we know that there's grace, but here without disputing because that place of disputing, mm -hmm. it keeps you in contention right. and where contention is you inherit the wind. And so here we need to understand and that divided. it keeps you divided. A house divided cannot stand. Right. So, I mean, fret not. I mean, wreck not. You know, so I thought delight, you know, is blessing. Delighting mm -hmm. is blessing. Well, you know, and then it goes on to say in verse 5 of Psalm 37, commit your way to the Lord and trust also in him. The thing is, this is that word commit means to roll it off onto. We're supposed to cast our cares upon him knowing that he cares for us. It's yes. actually a level of pride to try to take matters into your own hands. There's a scripture that I really like. It says, if you commit your works unto God, that your thoughts will be established. Yes. You have to realize that what you do affects how you think. And so if your determination is, I'm going to commit this to God, and I'm going to commit my works to God, I'm going to commit my way and my path and how I'm going to do things, not the way the wicked does, not the way the evildoers do, but I'm going to commit my way unto him that, you know what, I can trust in him that my thoughts are going to be established. I'm going to have the right thoughts, and then I'm going to have the right speech, and it's going to have a, a blessing upon my life. Yes, committing your way, and as we go through this scripture, I love it because now we've heard all of this about not forgetting about mm -hmm. trusting in God and, and about delighting yourself in well, one Him. One more thing is okay. He says this, commit your way to the Lord and trust also in Him. Right. And I forgot this part. Okay. And, and He will bring it to pass. Your time is coming. It may not come when you want it to come, but God is always on time and He will. <laughs> you know, I feel like, and He will <laughs> bring it to pass. You got to know that God will bring it to pass. Right. Amen. So as we, uh, God will bring it to pass. 
but that committing your way has begun because now you remove the fretting. Mm -hmm. Now you remove being envious. Now you're allowing uh, yourself to realize I'm going to rely in, depend on, believe in, and adhere to God's right. word. And then you're delighting yourself in God. And now it's a time to act. Now right. it's a time to put works with your faith. And this is where you commit your way to the Lord. The things that you do, mm -hmm. the places that you go, the things that you search out and seek, you if they're holy, you're going to commit them right. to God. You're going to trust in God. You're going to see him bring it to pass because these are things that delight God because you're committing them to him. And so, I mean, I yes. know that that's very important that as we go through these scriptures and you see this taking place in your life is that you realize, okay, now I'm at a committed place with God. And if you could hold up, hold on, and hold out, out, God promises to vindicate you. God basically says to you this. He says that in the next verse, he says, uh, verse 6, that he shall bring forth your righteousness as light and your justice as the noonday. God will prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. God will shine his light on your life. God will exalt you in due season. Don't be weary and well-doing for God will exalt if you, uh, and uh, faint not, yes. for God will exalt you in due season. I know I'm mixing up the scriptures, but you know what I'm saying right now. God will lift you up. God will raise you up. God will promote you, but you yes. got to do God, things God's way. We'll leave you with uh, verse 7. Um, it says, rest in the Lord and wait patiently on him. Do not fret because of him who prospers in his way because of the man who brings wicked schemes to pass. Look, like we said at the beginning, it doesn't matter how they do, what they do to get in, get up, get over. This is a season where you have got to find your rest and find your peace and find yes. your safety in your relationship with God and wait patiently on him. Are you willing to slow down your desires and your will and your want to for God to work things out in such a way that he can exalt you at the right time and at the right moment so that you don't have a wreck? Yes. Fret not, wreck not. And as you see that with these scriptures that God has given us clear ways to get to a place where we can rest when you begin to activate these words that are spoken, the scriptures that we've been ministering to you about, you'll find yourself in a place of rest. You may not feel like you're in a place of rest, but if you fret not, you will not wreck your life. And so we are praying for you here at Phenomenal Life today. We believe that God is doing great, miraculous things. Thank you for tuning in, and we look forward to seeing you again. Be phenomenal. Make life phenomenal. God bless. God is good. Phenomenal Life Today would not be possible without family and friends and partners like yourself. We thank you so much for your generosity and your giving and we want to encourage you to continue to give into the fertile soil of this ministry so that Phenomenal Life Today can continue to broadcast for your enjoyment. You can find us at PhenomenalLife.tv or PhenomenalLife.org to make your donation. God bless you and make life phenomenal. Be phenomenal.